Good morning. My name is Melissa McKay. I am the annuals greenhouse manager here at Bates Nursery. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about fall bulbs. Most of the plants that emerge in the spring are readily available here at Bates. Your trees, shrubs, perennials, annuals. But once those daffodils and tulips start blooming, a lot of people head out to the garden centers looking for those plants or looking for the bulbs. And unfortunately, your timing is a little off. The way to get those gorgeous blooms in your yard is to plan ahead and get them in the ground in the fall. It takes a little bit of effort, but it is one of the best gifts you can give yourself come springtime. So what is a bulb? Um, I'm not going to get all sciencey on you and give you the anatomy of a bulb, but basically a bulb is a storage unit for a plant's entire life cycle. So it produces a plant just like a seed does, but unlike a seed, a bulb starts um, saving up energy for next year's plant right after it's done flowering and it pulls those nutrients from the foliage that is left on the plant. Um, so it's important to leave the, the foliage on after it's done blooming, even though it looks a little ugly, that's the plant is doing its job. The bulb needs that, that foliage. Uh, when you receive your bulbs, you want to make sure that they are healthy and just want to give it a little squeeze. Make sure that there's no uh, mold, that it's not smelly, that it's not squishy. Um, it should be kind of like an apple. An apple is like firm to the touch. That's how your, your bulb should be. If a bulb is happy in its location, most of the time it will multiply and you'll eventually get a little colony. That's especially true with daffodils and with daylilies. Um, bulbs are classified as either hardy or tender. Your tender bulbs would be like gladiolas or dahlias. Uh, for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to be talking just about hardy bulbs today. Uh, some are hardier than others, like your daffodils, your bearded iris, daylily. There are some tulip varieties that uh, will come back year after year, but here in Tennessee, it's not really all that likely. We're just not quite as cold as the tulips would like. So um, if you do get them to come back the next year, it's possible that the bloom will be not as big and showy as it was that first year. And especially if you cut the blooms for cut flowers, probably going to get a pretty poor performance from that plant the next year. So I like to treat tulips and hyacinths as annuals in my yard. So we use bulbs as the terminology for these types of plants, but there's really different classifications of bulb-like plants. So first you have your true bulbs. True bulbs are going to be your uh, tulips. This is a hyacinth and this is an allium. Your daffodils are also true bulbs. This is pretty much, when you think of a bulb, this is pretty much what comes to mind. The next classification is a corm. Um, not a whole lot of fall bulbs that fit that, that or in that classification, but we do have crocus. And this is, this is a crocus corm. It's a little more flat and a little smaller than the tulip and daffodil bulbs are. Um, you also have tubers, which I meant to grab a example of that one and I forgot. Um, that would be an anemone that is classified as a tuber. Tuberous roots, those are daylilies. See how you've got, I don't know if, how close up we can get here, but see how they, there's like all of these little bitty bulb-like things sticking out of the bottom here with roots on them. That is a, that is a tuberous root. Also tuberous root would be a peony. This is one that I just dug up from my yard this morning. The exception here, whenever, um, when I said earlier that a lot of these things you can't find at the nursery in the spring, daylilies and peonies are the exception. We do have in the spring a lot of plant starts of daylilies and peonies 
So if you don't get them in the ground in the fall, those you can find in the spring. The last classification is going to be a rhizome, and that is on one of my very favorite bulbs, the bearded iris. Um, this one is in our garden center, so it's all kind of um, cut back a little bit. So I don't know how much of it you can see, but it's more, it's a little flat too, and it's a little more elongated. And that would be a bearded iris. Um, if you're like me, you are probably dealing with some pests in your yard. And unfortunately, bulbs are not immune to pests, but there are a few that are less palatable to deer and squirrels. And some that are even toxic to deer and squirrels. Those would be allium, uh, daffodil, hyacinths, and grape hyacinth. This is a grape hyacinth, just in case not familiar with those, muscari or grape hyacinth. So plant those. Deer pretty much usually leave those alone. In my yard, I don't have a lot of deer, but I do have moles and voles and squirrels, things that like to dig in the ground and cause a lot of destruction. And um, especially this time of year, the squirrels are really busy digging around, searching for things, scavenging. And if you've got a fresh mound of bulbs, they are likely to dig those up. So there are a couple of things you can do to deter those. Um, one thing, I've never done this this way, but uh, one thing you can do is plant bulbs in cages. Uh, I don't think we have any of those here at Bates, but that is something that you could purchase uh, to plant your bulbs in a cage. And there's enough um, holes in the cage that the foliage can just like shoot up through the cage. Another thing you can do is use a product that we sell here at Bates. This right here is called Enlighten. Enlighten is little, little chips of shale, pretty much just little bitty rocks. If you were to line your hole with this, normally um, voles and moles don't like digging into stuff that's really um, rocky like this. So that is a way to keep the moles and voles from getting to your bulbs. Put down a layer of this, then put down your bulbs and then plant over the top. You can also put down in the bottom of your hole um, hardware cloth or you could also use chicken wire and then for those squirrels that like to dig above ground you could put down you can also you know top dress your your hole with the enlighten here or you could put over a layer of chicken wire over the top and that will sometimes deter them from at least getting down deep enough to get to your bulbs all right so let's talk about planting most flowering bulbs like at least six hours of sunlight. Um, this is especially important after they're done blooming because they're going to need all that sunshine on their foliage to help them absorb all the nutrients they need for next year's bloom. So you may plant them in a place that once the tree loses all of its leaves, it's in full sun during the winter, but it's really important that you have them in a place that they're going to get that full sun after they're done blooming as well. Uh, well-drained soil is a must. Uh, several of these types of bulbs will rot if they sit in really heavy, wet soil. Um, here in Nashville, we tend to get a pretty wet winter, lots of rainfall, and that is not good for our bulbs. If you have a soil that is compacted or has a lot of clay, you can add landscape. Uh, this is what I like to use in my yard. Uh, just mix it in with my existing soil. The Earth Mix landscape has earthworm castings, pine finds, mushroom compost, and lots more goodies to uh, really get the nutrients into that soil and really break it up and, and make it more of a loose mixture. Uh, bulbs can be planted however your landscape is. If you've got a really formal landscape, you can make just like lines of them down the driveway. Or if you wanted a more naturalized look, just uh, plant them in mass. For a cutting garden, you might want to, like tulips and ranunculus, which I don't know why I have ranunculus on here. I'm not going to talk about ranunculus today. Tulips. 
tulips can be planted a lot closer than it says on the packaging if you're going to use them for cut flowers. They don't need all that room to grow. But if you're putting them in the landscape, you're going to want to give them about six inches of space. Planting depth, a, pl a bulb should be planted uh, two to three times their height. So like a daffodil bulb here. This daffodil bulb I'd say is probably about three-ish inches. I'm going to want to put that about six inches deep in the ground. Now with daffodils, like I said earlier, they tend to colonize. They make lots of little babies. Uh, so it's important that you give daffodils and daylilies decent space because they're going to need to, they're going to make lots of babies and you don't want that space to get too crowded too quickly. Fertilizing. I, I usually don't fertilize my bulbs, especially because I'm using the uh, landscape. That pretty much gives all the nutrients that a bulb needs. Really, a bulb already has most of what it needs stored up in that unit. But a lot of people like to use uh, a little fertilizer. This is bone meal. You would just sprinkle this in the hole with your bulbs before you fill in the hole. And we also sell here at Bates the Espoma products. This is Bulb Tone, which it has some of the bone meal in it and uh, lots of other good organic things, uh, chicken manure, alfalfa, lots of good stuff. So um, I told you about planting bulbs pretty deeply. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of exceptions to that rule. Your day lilies are a lot more shallow. These do not need to be planted six inches in the ground. I just dug these up from my yard today. And so right about here is where they were level with the soil. So they don't go very deep at all, maybe just about two or three inches deep and that's deep enough for the day lilies. Something else that you plant really shallow are your irises, bearded irises. It's gonna feel wrong, but irises really grow better when this very top part here, like maybe the top third of the rhizome is exposed to the elements. So I tend to like, I dig a hole and then I mound up the dirt I set my, my rhizome on top of the dirt pile and then the roots can kind of hang off the sides of that pile. And then I mound my dirt up around the edges so that just that little bit on the top here is exposed. It's important not to plant irises too deeply. They are prone to rot uh, if they sit in heavy soil or moisture. In fact, I don't like to mulch my irises because even the mulch is too much for them. That encourages rot and disease. Bulbs are happy in the ground, but they can also be planted in pots. My friend Austin gave a pro tip last week on planting bulbs underneath your pansies. And uh, if you missed that video, you can find it on our website under the tips and tricks and probably also find that on our Facebook page. If you're a little apprehensive about putting a pot together yourself, we have this cute little guy that we just got in recently. This is a, a peat pot here, and there are bulbs on the bottom. So you could just pl plop this whole thing into a pot. Uh, this is eventually the bottom of it is gonna break down so that your tulip roots can, can get through there. And you've got a ready-made uh, container right here. Also have with our bulbs here at Bates a couple of different fun combinations. This here is a combination of daffodils and tulips together and they're all color coordinated so you don't have to try and figure out what colors look best together. Work is done for you. We even have this fun little guy that I'm gonna be taking home that has tulips daffodils and hyacinth all together in there and they're all co color coordinated i just think that is so cute another fun project that you can do with bulbs in the winter it's uh looking all blah and boring outside and um 
not many cut flowers to be brought indoors. One way that you can get some flowers indoors for the winter is to plant paper whites. Paper whites are a narcissus, which is a type of daffodil, but they're just teeny tiny little uh, clusters of blooms. And they bloom, they can bloom without soil, which is way cool. I have here a vase and in the bottom I have got some clear marble like rocks and my water level is just right at the tip top of those uh, the glass marbles there and what I'm gonna do is put in three paper white bulbs that's it that's all you have to do the roots will seek the water down there and these guys will bloom just like this. I know it seems kind of kind of alien like but it works. I'm going to do that myself this year. I've never uh, planted them myself but I'm excited to to try this project myself this year. Uh, we're also going to be getting when we get close to the holidays amaryllis. That is a really big bulb that puts up a giant stalk of flowers, gorgeous flowers. Uh, gonna have those closer to Christmas time. It's traditional to see those in bloom around Christmas time or in January. Last thing I want to mention is dividing. So occasionally I will have a customer ask me why their bulbs have stopped blooming or are not blooming as much as they used to. That is probably because they are overcrowded and it's time for them to be divided. Um, daffodils and irises and daylilies are probably the most the ones that most like to be uh, divided so your daffodils like I said they can make little little baby bulbs and eventually they're gonna all be growing on top of each other and it's very difficult for them to do what they need to do when they don't have all that room so uh, it's easy to do this if you wait about six to eight weeks after the daffodils bloom and you still see some of that foliage on there. I would wait until it is very yellowed almost to that brown stage before digging that clump up. And what you do is you just dig up that clump, um, rinse off some of the dirt with either with a hose or you can take the whole clump and just set it in a bucket of water and loosen up the soil that way you can kind of see what you're dealing with there and once you see what you're dealing with you can break apart all of the little baby bulbs from the bigger bulbs and then you've got way more area that you can cover with these bulbs because you're going to want to space each one of those bulbs out about four to six inches out also with the daylilies i dug these three guys up together it might take a little while for them to get blooming good but you can you can pull these apart each one of these little guys is a plant so you can separate these guys and plant them a little further apart irises uh, like i said Bearded iris are probably one of my very favorite bulbs. I look forward to spring every year when these guys come into bloom. Irises are pretty happy being divided every three to five years or so. So I dug up this clump from my yard before I came. And this is what the clump looks like right at the moment. Thank you, Tyler. Sure. So what you can do to divide these Got a couple of these growing on top of each other, so I'm just going to pull pull that guy apart. And now we've got two plants. On this one, you can see how this is the mother bulb here, and this is one of the baby bulbs off to the side there. Just snap that off. It's make sure it's got plenty of little eyes there and you've got two plants here before i plant them in the ground i like to um, cut the foliage back like so and then i would replant these guys tyler we had any questions come in 
Uh, not yet, but if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them out. Uh, if you're either on Facebook or you're watching on Zoom, uh, Melissa would be happy to answer any that you might have. And on the subject of dividing, yes, um, how dense or how less dense do you need to plant after you've divided? Like a few inches apart, like you were saying earlier? I would plant them a few inches apart. Just like when you were initially going to plant them, you're going to want to space them about six. It depends on the plant. Like daffodils, irises, you're going to want to plant those about six inches apart. So then once you dig them up and divide them, break them apart, then you can set those plants about six inches apart, just as you would when you're initially planting. All right. And then we've got a question here from Dawn. When is the best time to plant bulbs in the fall in Nashville specifically? Any time in October uh, is a great time. And really, our ground doesn't freeze here. So if you were a little late and you got waited to get them in the ground in November, that's going to be fine. They'll, they'll still bloom okay that way. Um, if you have a problem with squirrels, a lot of squirrels are kind of done. Squirrels and chipmunks kind of slow down with their foraging towards the end of October. So maybe waiting until the end of October to get those bulbs in the ground. You have a little less risk of them getting dug up by squirrels and chipmunks. And is that kind of general for all bulbs? Are there, are there exceptions? Are there bulbs that you should wait? That is the rule pretty much for all hardy bulbs uh now we do sell in the garden center and i forgot to pick those up anemones and i have ordered some ranunculus as well those guys are kind of borderline hardy here so i plan to plant a few anemones now to see how they do and then i'm going to save the rest of my anemones and my ranunculus for very late in the spring so say like early march or so is when i would start getting those guys in the ground okay cool well the nursery is looking pretty good right now we are very well stocked on fall annuals uh i believe we have a sale on some of our vegetable plants at the moment that is correct got to move those 50 percent off on four inch pots and four packs so uh with that I'm not seeing any other questions popping up here. So, Melissa, go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, Tyler, I think you pretty much <laughs> tied things up there. Um, like like Tyler said, we have a huge selection of things for fall, pansies, violas, cabbage, kale. And our bulb selection is still really great right now. We have several varieties of tulips, uh, several varieties of daffodils. Think of the fun, there's like some fun colors of daffodils, not just your traditional yellow ones. We've got orange and we've got pink, really fun stuff. So make a trip out here whenever you can. And uh, there's lots of us out here that'll be happy to help you out with your fall planting. 